Welcome back to the Home Spa Beauty Podcast. I can't wait for you to hear my chat with Janine Jarman. If you thought that perms were a thing of the past, or if you thought you couldn't have one, or that the maintenance would just be too much for you, Janine has changed the game. As the creator of Curl Cult, she's an entrepreneur, a celebrity stylist, owns her own very successful salon, and has made it her mission to bring the perm into the 21st century. You will not believe what Janine has created. And when you hear our chat, I can guarantee you will be looking online to see exactly what Curl Cult is about. You can be educated by Janine on so many different platforms. And whether you are a stylist or just a very interested client, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts when you hear everything about Curl Cult and the return of the perm, but in a way that we have never seen before. So thanks, Janine, for chatting with me. Um, We want to talk all about perms today, but it's very much the new perm, curl cult, everything about how it should be and not how it used to be. So could you fill us in on why you wanted to redefine the perm? Yeah, so, I mean... Finally, it's now like a po- getting to be a popular idea. But about seven years ago, you know, I was finding myself looking for perms to solve my clients' hair needs. You know, they were like, oh, I just want something that I can kind of wash and wear that I don't really have to worry about. And they didn't fit into the like stick straight category, super blonde category, funky, punky colors. And I was like, well, let's do a perm. Let's do something that, you know, can maintain your long hair, still look, you know, fairly natural and be a little less committal. So I was doing big, loose waves and I, more and more clients were wanting it. I was getting a ton of business from it. And I was like, man, this is great, but this could be so much better because so much has not changed with perms. They're pretty much the same from the eighties when I got them done. Stinky, messy, a lot of steps. So I, five years ago, able to like get connected through a mentor, uh, Donna, with uh, this lab in Italy. They wanted some like inside information about the American market for, for hairdressers. So I went on as like a consultant for them in exchange, which it was probably like the weirdest transaction they've ever had. I was like, I don't want you to pay me. I want you to make me a cool perm or like, you know, the president, he was like, Luca was like, all right. Yeah. Like we, we have those capabilities. Um, and the cool thing, why all the way to Italy, uh, Italian, like Europe, I mean, you guys now have such like much more humane bylaws for what you'll put and won't put into products compared to America. So that was a big thing too, that I was like, if I'm going to do something, I'm not going to be a typical American and be like, yeah, you know, let's, let's, let's go Walmart. Like, (laughs) let's like actually make a beautiful product that maybe costs a little bit more, but you know, doesn't give you cancer and stuff. So it took me all the way to Italy, met with a chemist. This is five years ago to his dismay, a chemist and a interpreter. um, And yeah, I was like, all right, you know, tell him that here's my ideas for the perm, how I want to revolutionize it. And this mature gentleman was horrified and just so furious. And the poor interpreter, she was like, oh my gosh, he's so mad at you, which obviously I could see he was mad. He was in Italian and very large gestures with his hands. Um, after like three hours, you know, he was basically was like, you're crazy. Nobody wants a perm. It's the worst selling skews. Like we have perms. I made perms in the eighties for other big companies. But nobody wants a perm right now. Like, Yeah, I know. But if you don't know how to do this, scared to do this, then I'll just find someone else that can. Which of course, his sensible male ego replied, of course I can do this. Like and again, through this poor interpreter. But basically he was like, yeah, challenge accepted. And he did. He made me a beautiful perm. Our perm is like 
more neutral on the pH scale where a lot of herbs are either acidic or alkaline. Ours uses amino acids, um, cysteine and cysteamine to soften the bonds. It gives a softer, more gentle curl. Not to say it's less effective. Like for our perm, you use tighter rods to to like overcompensate for the softness of it. But the, the great part is it's really soft and it looks like it grew out of your head that way. The other part was too long of a process, like to get perms, you know, and if you want it, like someone like you, you have long hair. It's like these giant head of rods. You put this stinky solution on and then I have to rinse these rods out, which you've had a perm and it was, it's a laborious, messy, not fun process. Yeah. So we had to re- revolutionize that and bring it to today's standards too. Cause consumers, we've gone, gotten so much further in advancements with different hair color, bleach, all, all sorts of stuff, everything but a perm. So um, our perm neutralizes right over top. It smells significantly better. The smell also dissipates the second you neutralize it. So you're not going home reeking for the 48 hours in between washing. Um, used our perm with Piz and Protex technology, which is pea protein and Plex, this like um, sub- interior support for bonds to help better support and prevent breakage. Um, all that to say it's quicker, softer, easier to use for hairdressers and better results for clients. See, that is fantastic. And you are, you're so accomplished and you're so successful in what you do and you've worked with celebs and you've got your own salons and you've been on TV. So when you were working with this company or, or this creator, even though he must have, like you say, been thinking a perm, it must have been obvious to him and his team that this wasn't just somebody that had had this random idea. He must have known that deep down you knew what you were doing. And whenever I even go and get my hair cut, all the hairdressers, it's so evident. You guys are scientists. Everything that you do is either maths or science. So that must have came across quite quickly to him. Do you think even though he was like going, oh, what are you doing? Do you think he must have also known, hang on, this person, they know what they're doing? Yeah, he went through my like theory that I was like, all right, I need it to neutralize over top. And one of those, it's like a nuanced thing. One, it's a lot steps and a lot less time. But two, we can do softer shapes and do more sculptural sets, fix calyx, do things like that because it doesn't have to get hosed off. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to like, you know, kind of break the rules and perm on different things, perm on clips, perm on whatever, but we needed to neutralize over top to be able to do that. So once I like took him through that, he was like, but once he made it, like once we landed on the formula, oh, we hugged it out. He was like, this is, this is cool. I'm like, it's cool. Right. Like, so he did, it took, it took two years though for us to land on the formula, just so you know. And the hardest part was the scent Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's part of the perm process and it wasn't enough to just like put a, you know, fragrance over top, which as you know, trying to cover up something stinky with more fragrance makes you want to throw up. Yeah. So we had to do like, of encapsulation and then um note matching basically like if it was like a piano scale matching do us doing a scent that like mimicked the same note so that it felt like they kind of fit together um yeah it was like a lot of crazy stuff and the smell was which now it's like funny because I'll get like youngsters that will do it who have no idea of what actual perm smell like yeah and they're like it I still kind of smell something I'm like girl girlfriend <laughs> no if you let me get you an old perm and let's let's talk about what smell that's it so, and even um in beauty you still do well they call it a lash lift now but it used to be a lash perm but they've changed it to lash lift but even when you break open those tiny little sashes yeah. you're like whoa <laughs> So this, this smells more like a sour beer, Yeah. but more importantly, it's gone. The scent's gone the second you neutralize. So it's a very temporary thing. There's a lot of, and I don't know if it's, it's 
this is uh, popular where you are, but we have a lot of salon suites mm-hmm. are popular where they're like individual, like private booths. Yeah. Um, and those don't tend to have windows. And I knew like, if that's majority of our marketplace, we need to have a perm that you can do in a small confined yeah. space. That's not going to smell for two weeks. You know, yeah. like it, we need it to be doable for the, yeah. the current stylist. And again, I always bow down to hairdressers. I think beauty and hair, it can get sometimes a rough deal that people think it's, they call, sometimes they call it hair soft subjects. And that really annoys me because they yeah. actually take a lot, it's a lot of skill. So do you think that maybe the last, say 20 years of people coming up in hairdressing might have been through nobody's fault, just through fashion, might have been put off the thought of perming, being told it's something that we don't really get requests for. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think the taste level and expectation levels, like products have improved so much. Like even just with Olaplex being added into bleach, we were able to do brighter results without damaging the hair. So we have that and we are like, no, we don't want damaged hair anymore. And I think perm stayed in that space that they just left hair fried and frizzy in most cases. And nobody wanted to revisit it. They were stinky. There were so many hurdles to overcome. And now we don't even have, we have gener- lost generations that even did perming. So now as I go yeah. in and I'm teaching, not just like, Hey, I have a better formula. I have to teach people how to roll hair on perm rods. Yeah. So it's like, we're really getting down to the basics and how to set it and how to, you know, most of them have only done perms just to pass their cosmetology exam. Yeah. And those perms, majority of their clientele do not want. So they're thinking like, Oh, this is the only way you roll. It's like, no, we can use bigger rods, different placements, use our knowledge of how we use curling irons to set hair, apply it with our perm sets and achieve really beautiful beautiful looks that air dry gorgeous for the client that's something that you said that it did surprise me because I didn't realize that you could get beachy waves with a perm I knew that you could get looser curls but to actually be able to create something that let's be honest when you go onto YouTube and you look at the beachy waves, they look great, but that must be a lot of heat that if, if you want to do that every day, every week, it must be a lot of heat, a lot of product. I would guess that most of us that aren't hairdressers are probably doing it maybe a little bit too harshly. We're probably holding the heat on a bit too long. We're trying to, if I can't get a curl, I know that I'm guilty of going in again and again and again. Of course. Well, I mean, and it's crazy. Like you see the YouTube ones and it's always a girl with hair to her waist. And it's like, you know, as thick, thick as a horse's tail, mm-hmm. you know, and the rest of us are like, uh, okay. And, you know, our hair's here and we're trying to do it. And then we look crazy. One side's kicking out, one side's kicking in. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. It's just also time-wise, I think coming out of out of the lockdowns and stuff, like we are real reevaluating how we want to spend our time. The, the, the like level of like doneness we want to look to like there always follows makeup trends. And right now makeup has gone much more softer, much more natural, um, really more expressive for your own personal asset attributes, like with big eyebrows and things that are just, calling to action what you may already have going on with that hair is going to follow we want clients want or nine clients just people want something that they can achieve with ease again and again and i think you know relying on hot tools so what you're anytime you travel you have to bring this anytime like there's so many hurdles to overcome relying on hot tools and at the end of the day it's damaging your hair so Getting a perm for all intents and purposes, it saves you time, it's less damaging, and it looks better more often with less work. And there was also something that really surprised me. Um, anyone with shorter hair, or even if if the guys were looking for a certain style, it didn't even occur to me that it it wasn't always just for a curl. It can also yeah, just it, get shape. 40% of my clients are men perms 
men haircuts and perms. I like, I mean, and now to every, every male client I've done one on, they're like, great. Now I get perms forever. How can I, I can't go back Mm -hmm. because for them, you know, 30 extra minutes, couple hundred more bucks. Now for the next three haircuts, their hair is styling itself. They're able to achieve mid lengths that they maybe couldn't have gotten before because their hair is too sticky out or, or whatever. But with the perm, I can do clips. I can just lay the sides down. I can really like sculpt and get their hair to style itself and move and get going in the direction they want it to go. Whereas what would they have done before? Like blow dried it, flat ironed it. Like it's, they're just not going to do that. They'll throw on a hat. So have you almost created like the reinvention of the perm in the sense that back in them, when I was at high school and everyone had their perms, you were almost committed to all the products that you needed to get the perm to look good. But you've almost created a perm where the perm is, obviously you'll need some product, but the perm is doing the work of making your hair look good. So you're not yeah. having to control the perm. The perm is actually helping you to control your hair. Yeah. Well, those, um, you know, those like really shaggy hairstyles that are popular right now. Yeah. So many clients who have dead straight hair or frizzy hair will get those. And they're like, this looks crazy. A perm can like just force, you know, force natural Mm -hmm. intentions in place. And yeah, it's, it's so nice. I mean, I will say with any curly hair and that perms included in this, um, it is only as good as the cut product and how you're styling it. Now, you know, I keep saying like, you don't have to style it. You do have to, the right towels, the right, like it's easy stuff. And once you've got your, like your regime, like you're good, it's easy, but you do need, like we, we sell, we have a leave-in conditioner called magic spell. And we have a curl cream called enhance. Um, those two products, you can rinse your hair every day. Put them back in, scrunch it with a microfiber towel, cotton t-shirt, basically all cotton towel, not your regular towels, those cause frizz, Um, but scrunch it and air dry it and you're good to go. But you do have to do the thing. Yeah, I suppose, like you say, it's like anything. If you don't look after your skin, your hair, your nails, if you you neglect anything, you can't then say, oh, well, that didn't work. You've got to put a little bit in. But have you created a product where you can decide if you want to do minimum, but could you also decide this is going to be like my commitment? If some, if you know somebody just loves doing everything to their hair, can they really yeah. sort of have fun with it? Oh, totally. I mean, I we do some perms on people that like aren't really looking to get a curl, but just want like wrap curls to stay better in their hair. Mm-hmm. Want more volume without having to blow it out, then wrap curl it. It's it gets you at least halfway there by just doing a big, a big volume set. That's fantastic. And I know yeah. that you're in America at the moment, but could anybody seek you out? Could anyone, if a hairdresser anywhere in the world wanted to find out more, can they access what you do? Yeah. So if you're a hairdresser, you can go to curlcult.com, C-U-R-L-C-U-L-T.com. Um, we have a free certification on there. It's less than 45 minutes and you're certified and we'll put you on a map um, and it'll unlock uh, so that you can buy the professional products. So you have to be, we have to have your license and all that. We only sell the back bar to licensed professionals. Um, and then, then clients can find a licensed professional in their area. We have a salon map for anybody that's tested out in the method. Um, you can find a stylist in your area, but you can also buy our retail on our website as well. Fantastic. And do yeah. you have plans then to sort of roll it out just bit by bit around the world to I mean, out everywhere? I think so. Uh, we, I have a call with um, some important people in Australia later today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see. And they, they know how to do international. Yeah. It's hard because America is so giant. Yeah. Like we've only technically launched in the east coast and west coast of the u.s um yeah so i I mean yes i i feel like this is a solution for all the peoples everywhere uh but yeah we're and i think too like hopefully this podcast will you know show us exactly where we need to go next 
you guys will be like, bring it to the UK. I was like, all right, let's do it. And you know, I re- think one of the reasons why the UK would be so open to it is that we do love having fun with style and having fun with fashion. And I think people aren't afraid to do things with their hair, try things out. You know what it's like. You probably um, looked online or even looked at magazines. And when it comes to the UK, when you walk up and down the street, you will see all colours, all textures of hair, all everything. It's just anything goes. And I don't think people are scared of a perm. I follow a Sophia Hilton and I'm just like, I just need her or somebody on her <laughs> team to do it. And then we'll be good. Oh, but it's if we fantastic. just need them, hopefully they hear this. Let me know. I will show up and get everybody certified. <laughs> well, that is, is, I honestly think it, it's a no brainer what you've done because we are curling our hair all the time. And let's Whoa. be honest. Well, a lot of us are like not when it's it very humid well. too. No. Yeah. And when it's humid, like I'm sorry, but humidity is can be when it's damp outside, it's really hard to like fight frizz and fight all that. With a perm, with a soft perm, you can kind of lean into that, get it more polished, and look great when it's damp outside. Yeah. Oh, I so am so I, I have found that. I just that, I like think, a lot of the damper areas want yeah. to want the perms even sooner. They're like, uh, humidity, yes, please. Well, that's it. As you know, it can be quite damp here in the UK. So I completely understand that I'm on board. But I, I think it's so exciting what you've created. I honestly think that we're going to start seeing it. Even in the UK, I think we're going to start seeing the perm now that you're really sort of moving it forward and getting us to think about it differently. I just know yeah. that we're going to start seeing more of it. So just before we go, can we get everything again, your website, your Instagram, everything so people can check it out? So I'm Janine Jarman. You can follow me on Instagram if you want, but it's a bunch of kid pictures. Um, But our, we have Curl Cult, Curl Cult on Instagram. Our TikTok is great too. We have tons of transformation videos on there. That Curl Cult as well. And then curlcult.com. So everything just Curl Cult, you can find us. Um, Yeah, I mean, We like to think of this, it's a perm, but it's, we're creating permanent texture. And I hope, you know, as we see people encouraging their natural curls, us leaning into more textural driven beauty trends, um, that we lean in, lean into this and we learn about curls. And for those stylists that are like scared to cut curly hair, scared to have curly clients, you know, it's an important part of the business and not to discriminate by hair texture. You know, above all, there's this other calling that it's like this, this can be an equalizer in the salon community where we're going to help you get comfortable with it. And we're going to help you get great at it so that you can welcome all hair types and textures into your chair with, you know, with confidence. Oh, Janine, I just think it's brilliant, honestly. And I cannot wait to see more of Curl Cult. And we will definitely keep an eye out here. And I am going on to Instagram. And that TikTok's new to me. So I do know, but I just I know I've not ventured in yet, but it's time. I think you might actually be the person that gets me into TikTok. I just do what I'm told with social media. <laughs> it's not our fault. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, you want me to do a weird dance? All right. What else? What else do you need me to do? <laughs> That's it. I'll do it. I'm doing quite good thinking I'm doing YouTube, but I'm, you've, you've got me. I'll go into TikTok. I'll do it. <laughs> oh. I do all the things apparently now. <laughs> oh, I love it. And thanks so much for talking with me. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you.